Salutations, everyone! Welcome back to another Victoria 3 guide. Today we're going to wander into the Ottoman Empire. So this will be a country guide, and we are going to talk about how to save the sick man of Europe. Um, I've done this several times. Uh, there's only a pretty much one thing that can go wrong with this, and I will talk about that as we get started. So, first off, the Ottoman Empire, at this point in history, is considered the sick man of Europe. It's dying, it's got a load of problems, even though it outwardly looks stable, it is not. Uh, Ottomans have recently lost Syria and um, the Holy Land region to Egypt, and they are in danger of just complete collapse and Egypt advancing even further. So, the reason they're so hard is they start with this modifier, the sick man of Europe. Basically, you have negative 33 prestige, negative 25% bureaucracy, negative 25% tax capacity, and you do get some money from a religious tax, but the amount of battalions you can conscript goes down. Now, that last one tends to change. There'll be an event very soon. So let's look at what is needed to stop the sick man of Europe. So you have, on this achievement, you have to complete four of these Tanzimat journal entries. Pardon um, my lack of Turkish pronunciation here. So you've got several options. All told, you have six of them, out of which two are pretty much undoable. Um, I'm sure if you focused on them, you could do it, but my strategy relies on the four somewhat easy ones. So the first one here, it wants you to reclaim this whole area from Egypt. The problem here is you have to do a diplomatic play to start a war and if you're you can't beat egypt on your own very easily so you require a european great power to help you the downside i found if a european great power or more than one helps you egypt simply backs down preventing a war but only giving you one of the needed regions so you have to walk a very delicate balance between provoking egypt and not provoking them therefore and uh therefore this achievement's hard to do because if they back down, you get a truce, and you only have 20 years to complete this um, thing. So a truce that lasts like five years, if you're not going to get all your land back, nor can you get all your land in an actual one war. The only way you could pull it off, not that we're going to, is ally a great power so they are forced to join your play. Otherwise, swaying them to your side costs too many of your man diplomatic maneuvers to actually get all the land back. So anyway, we're not going to do this one. The other one we're not going to touch is education reform. Basically, build a university at least to 5 and increase the literacy rate of your population by 35. It's at 22, so you'd have to get to 57. I honestly don't think this one's even doable. So we are going to focus on the other ones. And we'll go from the one we're going to focus on the most last. So the first one here is bureaucratic reform. You have to change two of your laws, hereditary bureaucrats has to change, as well as land-based taxation, which is both good and fine because we want to change those laws anyway. The other thing that becomes a problem is your bureaucracy has to be greater or equal to zero, and this will very quickly fall, especially as we change laws. If we do, we advance it by once, but more importantly, we restore the bureaucracy and the taxation capacity. This one might be the hardest and most dependent on luck of the four we're going to pursue because it requires you to pass laws and laws obviously every time you go through a law passing cycle there's a chance that it passes it doesn't or it stalls out and gets harder to pass so to some degree you may have to you may get stuck on this one but the other ones we can handle the next one army modernization you have to change your army from where it starts at a regulars you have to get to at least line which is easy to do once you research the technology. The other one is you have to get 250 battalions. You start with 145, so you have to add at least 105 troops to your army, not conscriptable battalions, actually raised troops. The way to do that is build tons of barracks. Now, the problem is then you have to be able to support the barracks without bankrupting your country. So this is the one that will get completed last, and you should probably pull it off using this strategy with about two to three months to spare in the 20 years. So for the first 20 years, you're going to be focused on this whole journal, um, completing this one journal entry and pretty much nothing else. The next one, suppress separatism. Honestly, there'll be various separatism events. 
basically, so long as you handle them properly, this is never a problem. Um, specifically, there's a riot event where you get a choice of one of the three choices is send in the army. You want to send in the army. Um, and if you do that consistently, I've never actually had this fail. Um, it's pretty easy. Just don't allow any secession movements to kick off. So try not to uh, annoy too many of your local populace. And now the hardest one, and we're going to be focused on it the most, urbanization. We have to make 75% of the Ottoman states, currently we have 28.75%, has to be incorporated with an urban center. For those of you who do not know what an urban center is, and in this case there is no urban center here, but there is one here. This appears when you have 100 urbanization in the state, and you get urbanization through a Come on, game. You get urbanization through a variety of different things. In this case, you get it from various government buildings, resources, and agriculture buildings. The more you build factories and stuff, the more urbanized it gets. Stuff like government administration and universities are the highest. Now, getting it to 75% basically means turning every single one barring a couple minor ones into an urban center. It's very tricky to do, and it is the main focus of this guide. Because it takes such a long time to do, but if you solve it, you will also get the money needed to upkeep the units to get to 250 battalions. So, and now I will talk about where things can go wrong. The big thing that goes wrong is Egypt attacks you. If Egypt attacks you early, you're going to lose. If they attack you late, yes, you can win, but it drains money and resources that you want to go towards solving the sick man of Europe. Once you solve the sick man of Europe, you can then push on Egypt and retake these lands, although it will be harder. You should be superior to Egypt at that point. So let's get started. First things first, we want to start trying to change the laws. The Ottomans have slavery, which is a problem because you can't get rid of it early on, and it gives your land, local governors, your landowners, tons of political power. And they are going to be your main opponents here. You have to figure out a way to break their strength. The easiest way to break their strength is to change from autocracy to landed voting. If you change to landed voting, then everybody in your lower pops get a vote, um, your Capitalist clergymen and officers get more of a vote than just your, um, basically your landholders, nobles. So first things, we're going to make sure that we've got the government function. We're going to add in the priests. Reason of that is the priests kind of support some basic reforms and overall um, strengthening them, who are the easiest ones to strengthen, does weaken the local governor's clout just enough. So now if we try and pass landed voting, now if this fails, the other one we can try and pass is changing hereditary bureaucrats to appointed bureaucrats. Now, if the chance of passing the law drops to zero, cancel it, start another law. You've got a year cooldown, so you do it again. And in the case of later on land-based taxation, you can try and change it to like two other ones. It's quite awesome. Now, I will point out the difficulty here, and we'll cover this a bit more later, is that you can't change from land-based taxation um, to per capita because you have traditionalism enabled. And changing from traditionalism is difficult to do because, first off, you have to research some technologies, but then you also have to get your interest groups supporting the law change. So for now, we're going to try and do landed voting. And that's just solely to weaken the landholder's power, almost nothing else. Once you weaken them uh, by changing at least two laws, the rest of the laws tend to go easier and faster. Now, in terms of technology here, it would make sense to start building economic, but the reality is you want to build line infantry here because by doing so, you can, if need be, reform your army to make it less likely Egypt attacks you. If you stay on irregular battalions, the odds of them attacking you go up. Which is a shame because you'd love to use that somewhere else. Okay, the next things we need to do is we need to implement a um, consumption tax. We're going to throw one on grain and one on services. And in fact, we're going to go to another level and throw one on clothes. You'll notice it obliterates our authority. 
but it now starts us making money. On the other hand, it's going to make our pops very unhappy because we're now taxing them almost into oblivion. Everything else we leave as is. Theoretically, you could cut government wages. I find it tends to cause a little bit more trouble than it's worth. So we have to get all of these states up here that have zero urban to 75. How we're going to do that is very important. So first off, we need to get some more construction buildings. Construction buildings are, of course, expensive to do to build and run, but we want to do them. But before we do that, we're going to throw on iron frame buildings to get additional construction. And then we're going to pick a state probably up here. Honestly, you can pick any one of them. Um, and you're going to want to throw down at least two construction sectors. This is going to obliterate your economy, but you need to get at least two, if not three construction centers up and running reasonably early to have a hope of building all the economic buildings to reform your government, then you might have to even build more in order to build the, same, the correct amount of barracks. So now that we've got that started, what we're going to take a break is we're going to quickly look through our um, buildings production methods because they suck at the beginning. So we've got a choice here between um, wheat farms. Honestly, you can probably just throw it on single crop for now. The big thing is to change from ox powered plows to harvesting tools. Um, this will start some more demand for tools and it reduces the amount of slaves used. Same thing here, butchering. I think that's all the major ones except for lumber camp. We're actually going to throw it on hardwood rather than anything else. And then in terms of urban, we're also going to swap to market squares. Not going to change streetlights. We're going to change furniture manufacturing to luxury. And I believe everything else is correct at the beginning. Yes, looks that way. Okay, so this is where you have to do your own calculations and stuff, but I'll give you what I do. So when we look at this urban center, we have 30 urbanization, so we have to get 70. The two construction centers we built give us five. Okay, so now we're working our way towards 40, so we need another 60. Each of the agriculture buildings gives us five, so 15. And we're actually going to, you're probably going to want to throw down um, another level of one of these buildings. I recommend doing the lumber camps. And in fact, we're going to put the lumber camps to be the first thing built because the construction costs are going to be using lumber. So keeping that under control will help a lot. So all told, we've added 20 or more to it. So we need a couple more. <clears throat> So what we can do, and I do recommend you do this, is throw down a government administration. You're going to have to increase your bureaucracy level quite a bit. So you should pretty much build one of these in every area. Um, but it isn't as high of a priority as some of the other stuff. So it should probably be, be built last in the area. Okay, so we've now added 40 to this. So we're at 70. Now we've got to choose what else we want to build. In my experience, furniture manufacturers are never a bad thing to build. They almost always make you money. The other thing we're going to want to do is build a tooling workshop, mainly because a lot of the stuff we just changed to use tools. So we're going to put that right behind logging camps. Now, you're going to have to go through and do this for pretty much every province. Make sure if a province already has an urban center, you ignore it and move on. So, for example, some of these right here already have an urban center. This one has 50, 60, 70, 80, do a, probably a glassworks or a paper mill somewhere, 100, or over 100, rather. Same thing over here, iron mines. And you might have to pay attention to this as it's building, because you'll run low on iron periodically, which means you should go put the iron mine on the top to help reduce the problems. Um, and honestly, you're just going to keep doing that and doing that and doing that. So I'm going to pause here and skip forward and, uh, I'll catch up with you once we've started building. Also, I should point out that if you're like 20 or so short and you've already got a government admin center, throw down something like a university. Um, it will just give you that little bit more growth. Now province you're going to probably want to neglect is Ottoman Montenegro as well as other small ones like the East Aegean Islands and stuff. It's just not worth um, building them. They don't have enough resources. You want to build resources first, 
then uh, agriculture first, then resources, then urban buildings. Okay, I believe I've got most things building. So at this point, um, I still have it on pause, but I've gone through and I think I've gotten most things to 100. You'll notice I've got lots of buildings being built. Oops, I actually missed. Oh, I already had one there. Um, the actual stuff you build doesn't matter. Be aware that stuff like lead mines, iron mines, sulfur mines are worth 10. So it's totally all right to double up on them in order to get you enough. If we look at our journal here, you'll see it'll cost us 1,264 weeks. That's before construction stuff goes. So I'm just going to unpause it and run it for like a couple months here, just so you see how things change as we go along. Don't be too concerned by your radicals unless they get totally out of control. Now, whispers of insurrection. This is an event that pops up. Okay, so you can either pick they're just rumors, which radicalizes orthodox, or you can crack down. The reality here is you should probably do just they are rumors. Now, outside of this, you want to start improving relations with France and Austria. France is most likely to be your best ally. You can usually get a defensive pact, if not an alliance with them. Spain is not also another good one, as is the British. And you can end your rivalry with Russia if you want to. I've not seen them attack me. They're usually busy with other affairs. Now, we also got an event here. This is drafting Dominis, or however you say it. So you can either lose the tax that was penalizing you early, or you can say the tax applies to everybody and radicalize a decent portion of your population. The reality is this right here weakens your nation a lot. That in fact, you can only conscript so many people. So you're better off doing a draft applies to everybody. It's painful and it offends a huge portion of your population, but there's not much you can do about it. As you'll see, the amount of time that it will take to complete all our builds is dropping significantly. And we're still making money for the moment. Um, we could technically throw down another construction sector, but I am wary of doing so. As you saw, we started with what, 32,000 in terms of uh, profitable income, and it's now going down. So another event's popped up, riot in the Albanian quarter. This is, will happen several times. You can do local governor, but this gives you a very large governmental expense popping up you don't want, and it can escalate. Let the mob run its course, will escalate, muster the army and intervene immediately. Does give you a huge government expense, but it stops the situation from escalating. And you're going to want to keep doing that. It's going to pop up. You're going to end up with a huge amounts of costs you can't do anything about. So what we're building now is I stuck tool workshops on the top of our stuff because we're having a tool shortage penalty right now. So our, our decision to send in the army has turned violent. We can let keep those wood G traders in line. I don't recommend it because it builds up huge amounts of radicalism. Whereas if you do this, instead you gain infamy and you lose some relations, but you stop um, huge amounts of radicalization. So I believe all we have to do is finish this one tool workshop here. And then just like that, Bosnia is urbanized. In fact, we can actually stop constructing all of these because we don't need to. Okay, so now it's saying we find cheap paper hard to do. This is where we have to start setting up trade routes. So um, expensive government reserves, import paper. We're going to input this. It's going to cause a penalty. It's not profitable. You also need to make sure to run it for a day to complete it, then cancel it, basically. Now, we got lucky here in our first process of our law. We've got Sultan intervenes in political process. The reality is, this is pretty much the only way that you ever pass the law. And Sultan's Will Be Done gives you a 20% chance. Still not great, but without that, you're almost never going to pass it. So now we've got a tool workshop done. And I believe the tool workshop is having problems with iron. So we had an iron mine being built somewhere. So you go in, you find your iron mine, and prioritize it. You want to make sure that you have enough tools and iron to be bringing in resources, especially because if you don't have 
enough um, tools and iron, you have an output penalty on your construction, which is really painful and you need to get rid of it as soon as you can. As you'll see, it's dropped our construction massively. On the other hand, once we solve this problem, we should be producing enough tools that these penalties will go away. Or at least considerably fall. So obviously the iron shortage here is going to be a long-term problem, but it's now started to get our construction back up and going. So it might even be worth it at this point, considering how we're doing, to go through, find another iron mine, and build it immediately. Just to make sure we don't have any problems with tool shortages. Tool shortages are probably the thing that kills you the most because they kill your construction rate. And that's just unfortunately the way it seems to go. So we got another lucky event, Sins of the Past. So we can either get a 10% chance of passing or we can have people get corrupted by power and get a 20%. We want the 20% even though it causes trouble down the road because you want to make sure you pass this law. We got lucky. You probably won't get two positive events in a row. Just making sure we solve the iron problem here before I uh, skip forward a bit. Mostly we've solved it. Make sure you don't make radicals from discrimination because you discriminate against a lot. And uh, that's basically it for now. We're going to jump forward quite a long while um, until I've got most of the states urbanized. and then Or I pass a law. Actually, technology came first. We finished researching line infantry. Um, you immediately then want to jump over and start doing production and basically just stay researching production techs. Society, outside of romanticism, um, is not going to provide anything. You could theoretically go down some of these stock exchange stuffs, which help a little bit on your bureaucracy, but it's not game breaking. Make sure to keep an eye on your exports, making sure to export stuff that's actually valuable. Um, does cost you some of the bureaucracy, but getting the trade going helps a lot. Atmospheric engine should probably be what you research reasonably early on. Grab cotton gin and lathe first to get those nice early production bonuses, but atmospheric engine boosts the output of your mines a lot and really drives your engine forward. Also, even though you might have upgraded your military, don't change it to be upgraded early on because it can absolutely crush your economy. Although I would make sure you get cannon focus on all your uh, units to make sure you get uh, more combat strength. And actually, I should say, to refine this strategy a bit more, you should probably build like five or six iron mines before you do build anything outside of construction and tool factories, just because um, you need so much iron. Okay, we fully um, urbanize Dobrudja, or however you say it. Um, we got... Uh, government workshops built up the stuff. As soon as we hit 100, get an urban size center, we move on to the next area. Don't forget, once you research new technologies, to go in and look at your production methods. For example, flipping to a dye workshop frees up more money, as do all these changes. The leaded glass, although it looks negative, will help our lead factories actually make money, or lead mines rather, so it's worth swapping. And the other thing is, if you end up with a reasonable surplus, like we have here, you can go through and throw down another construction building somewhere. Just don't build too many of them. The cost grows considerably as you expand. Okay, so we're five years into the attempting to solve the problem. All told, urbanization has moved up. We're finishing off Macedonia and Albania. We've already finished off Bosnia and Dobrudz, however you say that name. Um, we're ignoring army modernization, suppress separatism, literally so long as we've picked the correct decisions, which are usually the moderate ones that stop escalation. We're making progress. Ignore our education reforms. I'll give you another update as this continues, but basically continue the strategy of building and upgrading stuff. Okay, we succeeded passing landing voting. Took a while. 
be aware that it does harm your authority. So at some point, you may have to go through and get rid of a consumption tax. The downside is, assuming we get rid of this one, we now start losing money, which is why we implemented so many of them, because now we have a reserve pool of 3 million gold. Mm -hmm. and now that we've changed the laws, we can let things adjust a bit, and then we're going to start trying to um, pass other laws. You want to give like a month or so to process to let the pops reevaluate their stuff. Then you have to start doing some hard decisions. So you could try and ban slavery, but be aware that banning slavery radicalizes governors and stuff. So it might not be the thing to do initially. But you got to get rid of hereditary bureaucrats and land based taxation. Now, either appointed or elected will. Bureaucrats will solve your problem. You ideally want appointed bureaucrats because you get to the taxation capacity and boosts your intelligentsia, um, who tend to support your reforms. But elected bureaucrats work as well. So I'd start by trying to do appointed bureaucrats. If it fails, switch to elected. If that fails, switch back to appointed. Pretty simple. So it's a couple months further from when I was last talking, but even though we reversed the consumption tax, we're still not losing tons of money. We're paying a lot to construct because we started building so many resource buildings. They're keeping our costs and making a decent amount of money for us. Um, we could start exporting luxury clothes and some uh, fabric, which would help. Now that we have political parties, we get free reforms. Keep an eye on who you have to move in and outside of government because it can cause some trouble. You want to try and leave the intelligentsia in your government if you can. They tend to support the reforms you need to pass. Okay, so we're still trying to enact appointed bureaucrats. We got a negative law here. It's going to wreck our enactment chances. So rather than pushing when we can't, we're going to cancel it and swap to the other one. You may have to do that a couple times. So quick update. Outside of Ottoman Montenegro, every other province that the Ottomans own in um, mainland Europe here, across the Bosporus, has been upgraded to urban center size one. So if we were to take a glance at our journal, you'd see we are 50% done. That was the easy half. The European side is much richer and has better resources than the Turkish Middle Eastern half, uh, which is why we started over there. Okay, we've gotten our first diplomatic coup here. We can enter into a trade agreement with France. You, we will want to do that because that will start getting us closer to getting a defensive pact and then further on an alliance. Oh, joy. We got some uh, negative stuff here. Oh, well. Keep trying to obviously pass laws when and where you can. Now, you'll also get this event um, to change how discrimination works. So you can reduce dis radicals from discrimination at the, offense, at the problem of offending the Sunni pops. You can do a middle ground or you can offend all the non-Sunni pops. Pick the middle one, it just works a little bit better. Okay, we're now 10 years into trying to enact these reforms. Um, you'll see our urbanization is up to 60%. Oops, it's still running, I didn't realize that. Um, we've solved most of the urbanization issue up here. We're working our way through these provinces here. It's going to take a while longer. Um, in terms of tech, we've pretty much just been solely researching economic tech and updating our um, production methods as we go, making sure to put on the atmospheric engine pump as soon as we got it, which makes a world of difference. Okay, short update. We failed to pass bureaucratic laws four times now. Um, so we have swapped over to try and to swap to agrarianism from traditionalism so that later on we can change from land-based taxation. Hopefully, in your cases, that won't happen. In my case, I've gotten some very unlucky rolls. And as I said, it's really the only thing that could screw you up outside of an Egyptian or other country invasion. We've now urbanized all of this area with the exception of cars up here as well. Okay, there we go. February 23, 1848, with seven years still to go, we have now fully urbanized. Oh, not fully. We've completed the urbanization uh, journal stuff, which gets us one way there. Separatism is going well. Army modernization is starting to be the next priority, but we also have to complete this very annoying bureauc bureaucratic reform. Um, and so far, it's not going well. So I'm not sure if this run will succeed, although the concept of the guide works. I've just gotten bad rolls. 
Okay, it's around this point in the game that we have to start going nuts building barracks. So, the Ottomans need to muster 105 more troops at minimum to complete the journal entry. So, f pick your states, start constructing barracks up to the limit, because we're right now on peasant levies, um, so we can't build completely to full. Um, just make sure you pick areas that have free population. Um, some areas have less population than others. And you're just going to want to build pretty much as many barracks as you can early on. And just let it all build up. Which means you may have to go through and cancel some of your build orders. Which I have to do there. Although actually I will leave that arms industry on. Uh, arms, not art. <laughs> Different A there. Big difference in arts academy versus arms academy. Okay, we've managed to get a defensive pact with France that would lead us to our alliance. You can see why trying to do the military conquest of Egypt is so difficult for the Ottomans, as in we have five years left, and only now are we starting to get closer to the point that we might be able to pull France into an alliance. Okay, second journal entry complete. We managed to um, suppress the separatism. I don't think we're going to manage to complete the bureaucratic reform. As I said, it was the most scattershot one, but we're getting, we're doing reasonably well on building the battalions needed to um, rebuild our army. Okay, well, we managed to finally change to agrarianism after about like 10 years of passing laws. Um, we're going to quickly, hopefully, get per capita taxation in like the first attempt or two, and then it's going to be. Hopefully, we can pass changing hereditary to a different bureaucrat. I doubt it, um, but we should be really close. This is really hard to do, so it's a matter of luck. And so far, my roles have been extraordinarily unlucky about passing laws. I had to switch changing laws about 10 times, which is a problem. Also, I should point out the fact that you should not neglect to constantly be regulating your government here. Um, we had a very low chance of passing uh, per capita taxation until I got rid of, uh, I kicked the governors out of it and put in the patriotic party. Um, theoretically, we could put someone else in, but it, our legitimacy is already very low, um, which is unfortunate, but the way it goes. And uh, But it did increase the success of passing by like 10%. So just make sure to constantly regulate your government. Okay, we've got the needed battalions to reform our military completely. So, it hasn't triggered yet. That is because it requires us to get rid of regular and change everything else. We just go over here, make sure none of these are irregulars. Um, the difficulty here is you have to have changed from the peasant law, <laughs> which we haven't managed to do because of our failure to pass every other law. Um, it's probably something I should have worked on earlier, but I didn't actually do that. Um, mainly because we didn't have uh, an interest group in it at the moment for quite a while. Um, obviously, that's a huge problem, and it's probably going to solely prevent us from getting this achievement. Um, our bad rolls, but hey, it happens. Okay, we managed to change per capita taxation, which is great. Unfortunately, it's probably getting too late for everything else. But once I've gotten to this point, I can actually remove these consumption taxes. And we've got, unfortunately, two laws we still have to pass. We have to change peasant levies, which should go pretty quickly. Then we also have to do hereditary bureaucrats. But unfortunately, we're running out of time. I'll give it a shot, but we only have 33 months, meaning we basically have to pass this on the first try, which almost definitely definitely not going to happen but everything else we've got all set up we just have to change the army and then change the other law and we would have passed all the reforms we'll see how it works out okay professional army did pass so with the big change you still have to go in and do is change to some type of army focus and that should oh um what am i missing here we're missing something ah yeah, helps if I actually change that. There we go. Army modernization. I think we could have probably done it just up here, and I didn't realize it. So technically, we still have one last law to pass. The odds of us passing it in time are slim to none, but I'll give it a shot. 
also now that we pass that reform we can pretty much go right back in here and uh change it back if we wanted to make sure that we're still actually having money coming in there's no actual reason to sit on these lower focuses if we're not using them at the moment well it's down to the wire we've got a little under six months here and a 16 percent chance of passing this law i don't think we're gonna make it but um if we do make it, I'll be really happy. If we don't, it just goes to show how hard it can be to pass some of the laws. Um, some things I might have changed early on was to get rid of, try and ban slavery. Um, obviously, I didn't do it here, but banning it would have massively weakened the landowner's political power, which made it easier to pass some of the other reforms. So, and do we get it? Nope. Instead, we get red tape which makes it even harder to do. So we're going to fail by not much. And that's just unfortunately the way it went. We tried. Um, but as you can see, this is the strategy to pull it off, um, unless you want to try and fight wars with Egypt. Honestly, I've tried it that way. I got close once, but I fell so far behind in my economy, it wasn't worth it, especially because... I still either needed to change my laws or do the education. Um, and obviously, uh, it was difficult to do because you were getting angry pops, you were losing pops, and war. And so instead, we get the dead man of Europe. And that's what happens is we're done. So anyway, that is the guide to trying to solve the sick man of Europe. Unfortunately, we missed it by... A very small amount of months and that's just the way it goes it was worth a try to be fair all you really lose is several subjects but um it still hurts so once you solve sick man of europe you can obviously then play the game like a normal one you'll get a chance um if you do stop it you can get a claims on all of the balkan lands here to retake greece and these other areas. I'm not sure. I think you get a claim on one of Austria's lands. Maybe you could invade them. But the reality is you probably still want to invade Egypt, recapture all this land. Sadly, you don't really have any journal entries asking you to keep going down there. It just it doesn't lead you that way, which is unfortunate. But um that is how to solve the sick man of Europe. Lesson learned from this run, definitely try to, as I did, change the law from landed voting probably first. Um, if you can, trying to ban slave trade would have helped a lot because the landowners opposed all the reforms. Um, professional army, if you're trying to weaken the landowners, is not a bad one to pass because the armed forces' political strength grows and they're relatively indifferent to your changes to the bureaucrats. Um, but they do support per capita taxation. Just be aware you also have to change your economic system first. So it's difficult. Find a, find a political party, promote them that pass your reforms. Probably go through, if you can, try and repress your uh, landowners, suppressing them. And you'll have a much better chance of doing it than I do. Although I counted it all up. I had 10 positive events and 38 negative ones. So... The odds of you having that problem, not going to happen. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, if you do have any questions about what I did when I did it, let me know. Um, but basically, I told you guys all I did here. I went through, built, built agriculture, built resources, and then squeezed in a couple urban buildings to just finally get enough urbanization. And that was the hardest part. Honestly, the urbanization is the hardest part to pull off. Unless you focus it hard, the law is pretty much hit or miss. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Check out my other guides. Like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye for now.